<laughs> Is he gone? Now we go inside the minds of men who dare to confess the secrets they would never tell the women in their lives. What is a man? What is masculinity? We box ourselves into these labels provided graciously by society without ever questioning what these terms actually represent. One way to understand the term masculinity is to turn to our culture and look at what our celebrities have to say on the matter. A football player, actor, and television host, Terry is the epitome of manhood. Or so it seemed, but according to him, when people came up to him and admired him, he had to bust this bubble and show people that it ain't all roses. You know, I would go places with my wife and people would go, he's so amazing, Terry Crews, oh! And there'd be that little, just that little hesitator, like, uh, right. and I was like, okay, I gotta bust this bubble. Right. This bubble is getting too big. Based on his experiences, men are taught to believe that they are more valuable and that in life, it's important to keep chasing the winds. I believe just, just because I was a man that I was more valuable than the women in my life. Because why? Because everybody said that. Chase your wins. Chase your wins. Keep them running. Keep them going. Keep them going. Keep them on. Because when you make it, you now I'll accept you. But you right. know what? They will never accept you. After all, that is what makes a man a man, right? As a definition, Terry believes that as you are expected to conform to society's baseline of what it means to be a man. Cult. You know, what I'm saying is the people's perception of manhood is a cult. You are expected to like sports. You're expected to, you know, look at the cheerleaders and look at women a certain way like, yeah, hey, wouldn't you? Hey, hey. And there's that elbow, there's that kind of thing. And what happens is um, over the years, you don't even understand what's happening to you. An accredited actor, Ryan Reynolds, holds a special place in the hearts of his fans. So when he opens up about his struggles with mental illness and anxiety, people listen breaking the stereotypical role of a man bottling his feelings. I had a lot of anxiety, a lot of different kind of phobias and issues that I had to had to sort of work through and, and it took me a long time to kind of recognize those things as assets as opposed to liabilities. We're sort of entering an age where, you know, people who don't talk about this. I mean, my father's generation, they never talked about mental health or what was going on inside. It was just bottle it up. And... He also believes that men are prone to feeling shame and fearing rejection more than women as shame is often found to be intrinsic to masculinity. Key point taken? Masculinity is the new vulnerability, or vice versa. Andrew Tate. There are three keys, I believe, to making money. The word of the day. So many women say to me, you're so, Andrew, Jeez. you know what? You're so rich. Watch Netflix, eat the bugs. Watch Disney, don't have a sword. Don't walk around with a sword. That's what they want you to do. The savior of manhood and a controversial figure known to be too toxic and traditionally minded had gained a large following based on his teachings on the topic of masculinity and how to man up. According to him, men are here to protect. Well, you tell me what you think it crosses a line from being a masculine good man to a bad man. There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you have, you want masculine men. I believe men have the sacred duty to protect and provide for the important people in their lives. I believe men have the sacred duty to protect the innocence and sanctity of their children and reserve the right and responsibility to raise their children as they see best to ensure their long-term happiness and success. Rather than be a threat to women, and men are prone to violence, as it's a natural tendency. It's something intrinsic about masculinity. It's kind of like when some girls hate girls who are prettier than them, not all girls, but some girls like, oh, fuck that, but she thinks she's pretty. Right, right, it's the right, same right. kind of thing, but it's yeah, just yeah, violence yeah. related, right? Contrary to Ryan Reynolds, Tate believes overly emotional men are dangerous. What is your real view of women? I absolutely not only really love women, I adore women. I have good relationships with women. Not a single woman has come up to me on the street since I've been canceled. Not a single one has said anything negative. Every single one of them has said positive things. You're a traditional male. I wish more men were like you. You understand your masculine roles. You understand what you're supposed to do. You understand you're supposed to protect women. To him, the definition of masculinity is simple, to provide and protect. Masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. Which quite obviously resonated with many people based on his audience. When asked what kind of a man he wants to be, Tate replied. What kind of man do you want to be? 
I'm gonna be a man who lives true to himself and a man who goes to sleep easy at night and a man who knows that he's living true to his biological necessities and, and instincts and tries his best not to hurt anybody and leaves a positive impact on the world. I've been pretending to be a man that I'm not my entire life. Justin Baldoni, best known for his role in the hit TV show, Jane the Virgin, wrote a book called Boys Will Be Human, talking about puberty and body changes, expectations from men and masculinity. So it's learning how to be themselves and recognize at the end of the day that who they are as they are is already enough. Their masculinity cannot be taken away from them. It cannot be emasculated. It's not something that uh, needs to be proved. It is innate. So if you are a boy, if you are a man, it is you innate well, in you. Good. Nobody can take it away. On being asked about the core message regarding masculinity, he wishes to portray. Justin had this to say. The message is very simple. As men, we need to embrace all of the parts of us. Yeah that make us human. That's it. Much like Ryan Reynolds, Justin believes vulnerability is what makes a man. Um, when in reality, I believe that the bravest thing that a young boy and a man can do is to confront the parts of him that are dark, the parts of him that are scary, oh, the parts scared. of him that make him vulnerable. Yeah. Are you brave enough to be vulnerable? To reach out to another man when you need help? To dive headfirst into your shame? Are you strong enough to be sensitive, to cry whether you are hurting or you're happy, even if it makes you look weak? He goes on to comment that wide-held belief that masculinity is fragile and can be taken away at any point. We have so little self-worth and self-confidence at such a young, young age because we're constantly trying to prove our masculinity. That's the thing about masculinity. It's this idea that it can be at any point taken away from us. Oh further breaking down the stereotypes that stem along with this word. Like other actors, Jonathan Major, a renowned actor himself, defined masculinity as a balance between strength and vulnerability. What, but what do you think masculinity? Like, what is your definition of masculinity? It's balanced, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's strength, right? And there's vulnerability. There's um, awareness, and then there's um, acknowledgement of ignorance. He goes on to list other contenders that define what a man is. I mean, I mean, the whole thing is, I'm an introvert. You know, on the outside, I don't, I don't give it away, you know, how I'm feeling, but I'm feeling a, a, a great deal, you know. And so, I, uh, I tend to, it's not calmer, it's just I'm just grown, you know what I mean? You know, I, there's a lot going on on the inside all the time. And it's by my work, you know, I get to kind of let people in on that, you know seems like men nowadays value vulnerability more than the stoic lifestyle Mr. Tate preaches. John Bernthal, an actor best known for his role in The Walking Dead and Daredevil, talked about what it means to be masculine outside of the traditional definition assigned to it. These sort of cornerstones of, I think, you know, classic masculinity are super, super important, but equally important is being kind, is being mm -hmm. empathetic, is to stand up for somebody who has less rights than you, somebody who's being picked on, somebody who's being put into the corner, somebody who's just sad. He goes on to comment on how masculinity is often represented as being hardened. That these things are all equally important and, and, and to be well-rounded, but again, when it's confused with being hardened or being uh, a picking on somebody or, or, or again saying it's my way or the highway. And that such values arise from deep insecurities. That reeks of such fear and, and such insecu insecurity. insecurity. Manhood to him is being connected to the empathetic part of yourself. While trying to bury that peace is easy, bravery arises from self-consciousness. Andre Holland, the star of Moonlight, believes that there are different shades to manhood. This movie has a challenge that and it shows that there, there's so many different shades to masculinity, to manhood. And that the vulnerability needed to be a man is what is powerful. The characters in this movie show us that vulnerability you know, is, is power. He further goes on to discuss how the society measures masculinity with a level of toughness. Masculinity is a, is a big part of that how you factor in on the scale of like, you know, toughness and of strength. So I think that people who see the movie, well, I hope that they'll connect to that part of it. Because I think it's important, you know, especially for young black boys. So often we hear like, man up, you know, toughen up, strap up, man, you know, 
Uh, stop crying. Uh, you know, all these all these little messages that we hear, and we internalize all of that stuff. And it's not until somebody comes along and says, hey, it's okay for you to be who you are. So- and that crying is seen as weakness. Jordan Peterson, a renowned clinical psychologist and the internet's favorite motivational coach, too has a lot to say about masculinity and its ongoing debates. In an interview, he expressed that it is necessary to be a man. They were struggling with their manhood and that you uh, give them this message that it's okay to be a man. It's not okay. It's necessary. He believes that the men of today are in an identity crisis because the West has lost faith in masculinity. I think it's because in, in a deep level, the West has lost faith in the idea of masculinity. Now, that's no different than the death of God. And he even goes on to say such a conundrum is no different than the death of God. According to him, the ideal image of a man has been disintegrated, which leaves a man weak. What that means is that the ideal that man could aspire to is denigrated. And, well, then with your ideal in tatters, you're weak. That's, that's definitional. Manhood is not destructive in nature, says Jordan. I like the masculine spirit. It's necessary and it's not fundamentally carnage and pillaging. It's not fundamentally rape culture. You know, it's not fundamentally world destroying. And when asked what masculinity represents, he remarked. What is a masculinity we can aspire to? Well, it's responsibility fundamentally. And, and it's, it's, it's to, to put it, symbolically is that your your responsibility is to incarnate the spirit of the logos that's your responsibility that's your role in life pick up the world on your shoulders and walk forward pick up the world with all of its trouble with all of its suffering with all of its evil and move forward with it and in bearing that burden learn that you're the sort of creature that can bear that burden and therefore deserving of respect he remains a role model for many men today who cling on to his words as if they were the holy scripture and refine themselves to be the men Jordan aspires them to be. Then comes Ben Shapiro, who acts as a political commentator and lawyer. According to him, the reason for the decline in traditional masculinity is... The basic problem is actually a really deep problem that I would call the cult of authenticity. And that... It turns out that women actually kind of like masculine men. Of in fact, all of human procreation is rooted in this essential biological fact. Agreeing with Andrew Tate's philosophy regarding masculinity, Shapiro comments... He will say, men have lost their role in the world. And then what he will model is cam girls. He say, well, that, that's not actually the solution. But what you're saying about the problem of men losing their role and men needing to be masculine and men needing to want to win and men needing to cultivate uh, an ability to, to go out and succeed and thrive in the world, all of that is 100% true. He feels masculinity has been equated to the term toxic masculinity. Why can't he just shoot people and drink martinis and seduce women? And what's wrong with that? Right, well, th it, that is, again, a cultural move. And you're right, against masculinity in pretty much every sphere. And the conflation of masculinity, which is good, with toxic masculinity, that all masculinity is bad. And so we need to feminize society overall. And that all society needs is. We don't need to feminize society overall any more than we need to masculinize society overall. What we need is for men to be men and women to be women. When a beloved comedian comes forward and talks about masculinity, you listen. Robert Webb, a beloved comedian and writer, wrote a memoir, How Not to Be a Boy, and regarding this topic said, I think masculinity, gender, the stuff that you put on top of sex difference, the stuff that gives sex meaning is largely made up and, uh, and harmful uh, often to both boys and girls. And it starts in childhood. And that's why I approach the subject through a memoir because that's where it all uh, kicks off. Going on to refer to the poem, If, by Rudyard Kipling to prove his point. And, you know, I look at the, you know, the poem, uh, if by Roger Kipling, where he talks about, you know, uh, is a is a, a famous uh, version of masculinity. I'm very fond of the poem, uh, and he's talking about grace under pressure and stoicism and uh, and physical courage, and and that's all fine. It's just that I can't help noticing that I've seen women exhibit these qualities all my life. He believes due to childhood conditioning, bottled up emotions in men often turn to anger. You are often told to not express it. You know, um, boys don't cry, shrug it off, 
button it up, man up, all that stuff. And it comes out somewhere and it usually comes out as anger. And I think it leaves you unprepared for adversity. So when mum died, I didn't talk to anybody. He further goes on to criticize Jordan Peterson's views. He, when he wrote his first book, spent 15 years and he has studied uh, and he has studied all of world culture to his satisfaction. <laughs> and his, his summary of it <laughs> is that um, men represent order and women represent chaos. Adding on to say, jibing at how backward the psychologist thinking is. And there you have it, people, your favorite celebrities and where they stand on masculinity. It turns out vulnerability is extremely important to most of these men. We would love to know what you think, so don't forget to comment and share your valuable opinions below. Until next time.